Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. My name's Sean and today we got a video for you and this one's on snowblower again. Um, this one's a single stage. This came from my uncle's house. He unfortunately had passed away a couple months ago and uh, I had found this one and it looks like it's pretty good shape other than it won't run. So I think I have an idea what's going on with it, but we'll, we'll get right into it. So this is a Troy built Squall 2100 single stage electric start um, obviously the paddles need to be replaced and uh, there's some other things that I want to take a look at because I have no idea how long it's been sitting but we know at least that the plunger is bad um, and I have a, a whole kit for it so we'll go through the entire thing get it up and running and uh, go from there all right let's see what's in the box here we have uh, one of the scraper the I don't know what that's called on the bottom where the snow gets fed into the paddles. This kit I ended up buying on uh, Amazon a couple of months ago, which I probably could have used it because we're just about out of the season, but it looks like it came with just about everything here. We have a new spark plug. Um, a new primer. We have a fuel filter, sorted bolts. Paddles, more paddles, looks like that's about it. First thing we want to go after here is this primer. Um, if you were just replacing the primer, you can just pry this right off and there's a hose that connects to the back, you would pull it out and be done with it. But we want to go after the carburetor and clean it out since we're here. Um, you just need to pull this choke off, pull the throttle right out, the key out. There's two bolts back here, and there's two bolts here, two bolts on the bottom. We'll get those going now. So I missed the bolt up front here, but um, once I did that, uh, there's two bolts here on the side that you saw me take off. They're attached to the carburetor, but they're at an angle, so it takes a little bit of pressure to actually get this out. I think it's stuck on something, but it's really not. Um, once we get this out of the way, we can tell that it looks like somebody else has been in here before. The breather tube is folded right in half and wasn't put on there correctly, so that may have contributed a little bit to what was going on. But um, we'll get this carburetor off here. Okay, first we want to take this little plate off on the front. Just slides up and out of the way. And then we'll want to pinch off the fuel line. I just use a pair of vice grips that are flat nose on them. All right, so I ended up taking that back off and uh, moving the clamp up above where I wanted to pinch this off. And then I'll put this on. I'm going to remove this little tiny return spring here. Very carefully. And then we'll work on getting this hose off. Once you have the fuel line off here, you can pull the carburetor about halfway out and um, take this throttle control lever off as well. And then the entire carburetor should come straight off. I'm glad I took this off. It's um, I could smell. Well, you could even take a look there. The, this has been sitting around a while. The fuel smells uh, old. Speaking of which, Oof. That 
Jones on there. I have the uh, ultrasonic cleaner all heated up, ready to go. I'm going to put everything in there except the gaskets. My ultrasonic cleaner has a, uh, a very large basket in the bottom and I'm afraid that some of the stuff is just going to fall through. So I put everything in a can and I fill the can. This thing is really dunked up. <laughs> that needle is stuck in there. There we go. Hmm. This gasket didn't fare so well. We'll have to see if I can salvage this. Well, the main jet won't come out. Um, I'm risk of breaking it. I think I'm going to put it in the cleaner first and see how it fares. Even this gasket won't come off without tearing it to pieces. So let's run it through there and then we see if we can get the jet out. Okay, so I just got this out of the uh, ultrasonic cleaner and with enough persuasion, I managed to get this out of the, the main jet out of the center. And you can tell it's just terrible. In fact, I'm going to send this back in. I'm going to do a little bit more cleaning. Um, let me get the torch brushes and see if I can clean this up a little bit more. So I have the uh, cleaners for the torch tips. And I like to use these because they're very small and they have the ridges on the side to run through all of this. Let's get a larger one here. This orifice is just clogged tight. <laughs> Can't even get anything through it. Here we go. Everything's come back out of the uh, ultrasonic cleaner. And it looks pretty good. Um, I cleaned it up a little bit more. I took uh, a little brush to it. And we're going to put everything back together. Should go quick. This gasket, um, I would really like to replace it, but I don't have a kit for it. So we're going to put it in and hope for the best. The seat down there for the needle, I cleaned it out as best I could. Again, I don't have a rebuild kit for this. So we're just going to, uh, we're going to put it in after it's cleaned up and see how it goes. When I took this out, everything was stuck. There was nothing working, which also contributed to the no start. Um, even if the primer bowl was, was ripped, you might still be able to get it primed without it. 
but everything was so gummed up it was just it was bad so obviously this is moving very easily now Almost forgot the washer. And if this does leak, no big deal. I just get a rebuild kit for it and uh, shouldn't be that expensive, but we'll try without it first and see how it goes. We can get another couple seasons out of it without any additional costs. That would be ideal. All right, let's get it back in. Okay, I have the carburetor here. I have this um, breather hose that needs to be replaced. It's got a kink in it and uh, I just don't want to deal with it. I don't have something that's very similar to this. The, the one that's on here, there's no pressure, there's nothing here, so, but um, I do need a piece of hose that will work the same way and I have this piece of fuel line that's definitely overkill but it will work it shouldn't bend like this one did in the past and hopefully we won't have the problem with this in the future Okay, so I couldn't use the clamp that was there. Just couldn't get it over with the size of the diameter of the, the hose in general. So I'm using a hose clamp, a mini clamp here, which is really overkill. There's, like I said, there's nothing here. So we're gonna put it on. It'll be just fine. We're not gonna worry about it. Okay. Line back on. Get our small return spring back on. Try to get out of the light for you. Now, what we should do is just release this and see if we have any leaks, because if we do, we gotta take it back off anyway, right? So far, so good.
Here we go. Voila. Oof. We are leaking just a little bit there. Okay, I'm gonna stop here a minute and uh, let this sit. I just checked and see, I tightened it up a little bit more as you saw, and um, see if we're still getting a leak. And um, if that's the case, then we're gonna take it off and then we're gonna be rebuilding this as well. Just like that. And right here that uh, breather hose goes right into that little spot. Keep this up out of the way. Hopefully we can mate this up together. I think that's why I bent the first time around is that uh, It just is a hard spot to get in there and the cose is so short, so. Let's get this primer bulb on first. definitely worse than expected so all I can say is I left this front part out kind of worked it in there the breather hose kept it from from moving where it needed to go um, I guess it's really designed to take more off than than I did but uh, in the end we're there did check the oil on this. We're going to try to start it here before we go any further. But it's obviously overfilled. But it's clean. It's really good. So I'm not really going to do anything with that right at the moment. I will uh, change oil on this before we finish. Choke in, choke knob.
Ich bin mehr. Ich gebe Rohr. Alright, so I was uh, screwing around a bit with this thing and uh, pulling it and it's obviously sitting up about chest high so I grabbed a cord let's just give it a whirl and see if she'll start. Now I have stuff falling off the uh, table here. That's great. That's that's great news. Um, so that means that this thing will work. I did uh, actually need to see if the auger works. Let's try that one more time. Perfect. I'm thrilled. All right, so now that we know the runs, we'll just uh, take these paddles off, get this done. Um, looks like the, the old bolts are 3 8 But they're supplied new hardware, which is 10 millimeter. Of course, it probably came from the Chinese, so that would be why. The only thing we have left here to do is take this cutting edge off. through the, the ringer a bit. All right, we got new hardware with this one as well. Let's get those in. The other one had lock washers, but these have uh, their nylock nuts, so. Looks like it has some, some play here as well, so you can adjust it back and forth, but uh, We'll have to get it on the ground and adjust it before we know exactly where it needs to be.
we're gonna go right about there. All I did when I put that down, all I did was um, just check and see where everything was touching together, both the, the paddles in the front, which were at the lowest spot, and then this plastic piece. It looks like just having it about a quarter inch out might do it. But it's gonna be when the, the rubber meets the road when we actually do snow. So. All right, let's set it down, take a look again. That's pretty good, actually. It's almost all the way to the front. And uh, it looks like it even go lower, but there's really no lower. Couldn't push it back any further, so we're gonna tighten up right there. everybody I think that about wraps it up for this video um, it's running it's got some new uh, paddles on it and uh, I think we'll be ready for next snowfall which hopefully won't happen this year um, again if you like these videos please hit that like button subscribe and hit that notification bell if you want to be notified about more videos like this one